Welcome to this week's sermon follow-up video. My name is Aaron Rohr. I'm here with Pastor Dave again. Uh, as you can uh, see here, we're in a different setting. We're up here at Camp DeHiglo, uh, just over the Pennsylvania line. And uh, Pastor Dave, how's it going, man? And it's been a great week. I uh, so appreciate your prayers. Um, we've seen some decisions that students have been making. And, of course, always uh, having the privilege to challenge them to not just make decisions emotionally, uh, but to make decisions based upon the Word of God. And so it's been a great privilege uh, to preach uh, God's Word and to see uh, lives change and hopefully transform uh, by the cause of Christ. So appreciate your prayers. Uh, definitely miss everybody back home, but we're uh, glad and excited for what God is doing. That's awesome, uh, yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. Glad, glad uh, Aaron can come up here and uh, join me today as we uh, take a look at this uh, this very important topic of faith. Sure. Well, as you said, uh, the, the uh, sermon from Sunday was entitled Faith. We're just going to call it Faith. Uh, in our What is Salvation series. And first question off the bat, uh, can you better explain how faith is involved with satisfaction? You talked about uh, the, to the, the idea of satisfaction and, and how Christ's work on the cross is, satisfies God's wrath. And, and how does faith play into that? Yeah, you know, that idea of faith being satisfied mm -hmm. is, I think, more important than we tend to make it in Scripture. Uh, we look at that word there in Romans 3 that, that Christ is the propitiation uh, and that because of that now we have faith in Him. And that idea that uh, as we looked at on Sunday there's two sides of satisfaction. First of all, that God's holy demands were satisfied by Christ. Uh, and what that does is it limits us from trying to build religion. Instead of working our way to God, no, no, no. Christ satisfied the demands of the holy God. Um, secondly, uh, it also satisfies us and, and in the realm of uh, that I put my faith in Christ. And when I put my faith in Christ, what I'm saying is I'm satisfied that his sacrifice is absolutely enough for me. So if, if, if I go on the extreme of feeling unworthy and I feel like, oh, I, I just can't live up to Christ. I, can't, I really can't be saved because I've got this baggage. Well, then what we're saying is our faith isn't satisfied in what Christ has done. We can also go to the other extreme that says, uh, you know, I'm trying to do all these good things. I, you know, I hope I get into heaven. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being the best I can. What we're saying is then is, is that what Christ did was not enough for us. And so we're really not satisfied in it. And that's that word uh, propitiation, that he satisfies every area of salvation. And, and so I think we tend to overlook that. We think of faith just merely as believing. I just believe Jesus died and rose again. But I think that it's, it's a faith, faith is in the idea that we're satisfied in who he is. We're satisfied with what he's done. And so I think that's, that word satisfaction, propitiation, man, when you study that throughout scripture and you see what's said about it, uh, you see that faith isn't just some understanding of what Christ did. It is that I am satisfied that what he did is absolutely enough for me. Wow. And that's salvation. That's great, man. That recognition, you know, and, and you, know, you, you, you were talking about that Sunday morning and in my notes, I obviously was taking notes and uh, talking about that, and, you know, just reflecting back on that. You know, am I really satisfied in what Christ has done? And, and we, and as a follower of Christ, I should be. Right. And that's it. And that's uh, again that picture of grace and that a picture of the work of, of what He's done. And I mean, it is that's just right. that's it. Yeah. You know, period. And, um, and and you know, Aaron, one of the things that that we wrestle with as Christians is why do we see people that seem to make a profession of faith? never fully follow Christ, or, or then later on just drop off like uh, like a ripple in a, in a creek? Why, why do they just drop off? And I think the, the reason for that is because their faith really wasn't satisfied. And so if their faith isn't satisfied in what Christ has done, then how can we say we're even saved? How can we say that we're really trusting in Christ for eternal life? If we're not satisfied, that that's enough. Um, and that takes all the pressure off us and puts all the glory to God. Absolutely. Um, well, second question here is, what role does, and you kind of started to talk about it, but what role does intellectual assent have to do with salvation? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a, that's a great question. And I, I would say, probably in my own life, Aaron, that, that has been one of the things that I've battled the most because I tend to enjoy the intellectual discussion about Christ. I tend to enjoy uh, the mental side of thinking about the facts and knowing all the statistics and understanding the deep theology of what Christ has done, but I absolutely struggle with, you know, the idea that that can't be what saves me. 
Uh, it cannot just be knowing the facts. And I think for mo a lot of my life, I understood the facts. You know, I remember the stories as a a uh, child at church. Thanks, man. God looks out for me as well. <laughs> but but I think it's it's not just the facts. Um, it, it's deeper than that. However, facts are important. Like we have to believe. I mean, it, and that's why I use the word merely. I, I didn't say it wasn't historical facts. I said it's not merely historical facts. And the reason I said that is because it's not that I don't believe that Jesus existed. I mean, I mentioned James 2.19. Even the demons believe and they tremble. I mean, the demons know who Christ is. They know what he's going to do and what he did. Um, but that obviously isn't going to get them to heaven. So agreeing with the facts is very, very important. However, it's only one aspect to faith. Uh, just a faith that believes in the facts misses a faith that is satisfied in what Christ did for us personally. So we go from factual to practical. Factual, yes, he died and rose again. Practical, man, it satisfies me. So, uh, yeah, I would I would definitely say the historical facts of Jesus dying, the intellectual ascent is important, right. but it's not saving faith. And the, the result of the obedience and the change that happened from the inside out, which is, we kind of talked about that, I think, a week ago uh, in your sermon, uh, you know, is, is the result of, of that saving faith, of that yeah. faith that, you know, so this has happened, so therefore this is changing in me, and this is the work of the Holy Spirit, and what he's doing in me as a result. So, yeah. Great. Absolutely. Great, yeah. Uh, well, one final thought, you know, we were talking about justification, and you made this comment, and uh, the way, I'm going to paraphrase the Dave Vance uh, uh, statement, but it was, you know, whether you're a staunch atheist or, or no matter what, if you're here today, we all want to be justified. We're all looking to be justified. Can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, you know, it, the scripture says in, I, I think there are Romans, Romans 7, 8, Romans 8 specifically, that even the creation groans for the glory of God. And, and so there, there's this... Even in nature, there's this desire to be made right or to get things right. I think there's a desire in all of us to be declared right. We want to be not guilty. Um, and, and that's where you see people that go off into sin. I mean, we find today uh, major things like uh, a shooting in Norway. I, I mentioned that in the sermon that, you know, what would cause a crazy, uh, a crazy gunman to go in and shoot a bunch of young people to camp, much like we're, we're at today? Uh, what would cause that? Well... He justifies himself. He says, I, I do it because of this, because of that, because of this reason. He wants to be justified. Um, uh, you know, what would cause someone to go into other sin? I mean, it, we can look at the uh, gay marriage issue today, and we can say, what what's happening there? Well, uh, people are trying to justify what they do, and so they're saying, hey, look, we're, we're making it legal. If it's legal, then we, we're right. We're, we justified it. Um, and so people will... Which, uh, switch scripture around, they'll twist it, they'll they'll do whatever they can to be justified. And the point of scripture there at Romans 3 and, and over and over again all throughout scripture, Galatians, uh, you know, even Colossians talks about this, is that we are justified by his grace through faith. And so faith, when I put my faith in Christ, at that moment I am declared right. I am then given the righteousness of God, the righteousness of Christ. That's found in Romans 6. I would encourage you to read Romans 6. Adam came, sin came. Adam died. Christ came. Righteousness came. Christ died. Now that we can have his righteousness. Adam died, we have sin. Christ died, we have his righteousness. And that beautiful picture of that great exchange. So, yeah, I, th I think there's this desire in us that we want to be right. We want to be right. And the only way we get right is when we come to Christ. That's righteousness. That's that's justification. I am declared not guilty before God because of what He's done. The payment's been, uh, the, the debt's been paid. It's it's finished. So I think that that picture of hey, we want to be justified, and if you want to be right, it's Christ. It's faith in Christ. Faith in Christ declares us right. That's great. Well, uh, Pastor Dave, I know it's been a busy week. I appreciate you taking time out. Uh, it's good to chat about the sermon. I look forward to the next time. And, uh, man, I hope your week finishes strong here. And uh, keep preaching the word. And you guys have a great rest of your week. Thanks. Thank you, man. Thanks Thank for man. coming out. Yep, appreciate it. Good, buddy.